Hi, I'm Cena Resina. Welcome back to Berlet Swing. This is episode 3 right now, I want to say, so let's start. I was wondering where the audio went. Okay, I, I, I can see the audio is alive and well. Alright, so I'm going to level selection because I actually did some levels. Not many, I just, you know, did the first two just for practice. Okay, so let's start with this one. Let me just lower my audio a little because it's a little deafening. There we go. I was playing another game and, you know, different audios. There we go. Let's play this one. Oh, I remember. Okay, hopefully I can do it fast. Ah. Ow! Damn it! Oh, okay. Well, you see what I have to do. And believe me, doing that, grabbing onto the second one, was a really hard thing until recently. Oh! Okay, I, I, I was too close. Yeah. What the hell happened? Like, I hit with something, but it didn't kill me. I just, like... Oh! Oh! Oh, wow! Nice! Now, the next one is really annoying. So, you see, the exit is in there. Also, Polybus, I guess, Polybius. Nice reference. You have to grab onto something, but you don't know where are you moving. You're supposed to be going up, but then the, you know, the screen light... In, goes to the inverse in there and, the, and all the little screens in the arcade are see they move along with me so that just makes it more confusing so yeah let's start we'll just grab by the what is it here and you just kind of grab onto stuff and it pulls you in or out maybe uh, see, it's I, I I know you cannot see it, but from my point of view, it's really disorientating. Okay, this is where I left off. I had to go through this hole and then make a turn to the left. There is nothing behind me, and just dead, like around me. Just have to grab, uh, but not move too much to the side, as you saw. Also, not go too too far high. Oh, too high! What did I tell you? Oh, I was so close. Okay, that was too much, too sharp of a turn. Oh, whoop. oh, so close. Well, at least I see the exit. You saw it, right? It's right there. Ow. And again, since this game is in first person, it's making me like duck and lean forward and stuff like that when I'm playing. I mean, I, I usually do that already. Yes! Oh, that it feels so good. But when I when I crouch or lean or anything, it it messes up my positioning. No reference exception. Object reference not set to an instance of an object. I mean, uh, I know this is programming language, and I kind of understand some stuff. Well, for example, ready, tempering, goodbye world, 20 go to 10, run, and then it says goodbye world 10 times. So where do I grab? Like here? Oh, it's a rocket. Okay. I just have to... Ah, I see. Okay, okay. 
I understand what it, what it needs to be done. Oh, jeez. Okay. Oh, wow. This. Okay. I, I I see where this level is going. I, I cannot get. I, I can get behind that. I mean. I just need to be careful. See, careful. Whoa, the polybus machine almost kills me. I don't know why why the, the way I said like the polybus machine almost kills me remind me of uh, American Dad like clip. I don't know if you watch the show but but basically was Kermit the Frog trapping the phantom zone along with the the guy who made him i don't remember the name of the person but yeah they were trapping the phantom zone because they the five gold well kermit the five gold and then you can hear the guy say oh please forgive us and then you know kermit saying you will bow down to me son of god <laughs> and he was so funny now it's in the same voice because, you know, the guy who handles Kermit also makes the Kermit voice. But you can tell, like, it's first the guy talking because you can see his lips moving. And then when you hear, like, you will bow down to me, son of God, it's Ker the Kermit, like, puppet moving. So funny. Rage Squid, oh boy. What is going to make me Rage Squid? Uh, yeah, maybe I can grab onto that. Yeah, that's easier. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oops. No! Oh. Okay, that worked. Kind of. You know what? I'm not gonna complain. That worked. Spears. Oh, I have to grab onto them. But how the hell do I... Oh, I have to go around it. I see. I see what you want me to do then. But yeah, it's so funny listening to Kermit the Frog. Or what? I'll listen to impersonator saying like... You bow down. You will bow down to me, son of God. Oh, I was there. I just didn't like land it. And I really enjoy American Dad. It's a, it's a good show. It's way better than Family Guy. Of course, you know, later seasons will, you know, start getting infected by Family Guy. Because they change the writers and stuff like that. It always happens. It's the same with The Simpsons. But I'm still enjoying, right? Oh. The newer seasons of American Dad, I watch them at work. I don't really do much at work, so... I have to spend my time doing anything, whatever I can. So, I always take my old tablet. Uh, plays whatever it could be anime it could be cartoons although I prefer watching cartoons instead of anime or if I'm watching anime uh, I like it being dub instead of subtitle because you know subtitles are too distracting and you either oh And you either read the subtitles or, you know, do your work, your job. And I do my job. It's not too hard, actually. That's why I, I bring something to watch while I'm doing it. I'm just mining a counter. My counter on my business. That's why I can do stuff like that. Oops. 
Well, yeah, I still enjoy the newer seasons. Oh, that was a perfect angle, but you know, the thing was in the way. The spear, I guess. There we go. Yeah, that's the stuff. Data mining. Oh, I see. I see what I have to do. I see your game game. Okay, that worked. I don't know how, but it did. I don't know how I did that. First try, no retry. GG, easy. Around the corner. Oh well. Let's see what's around the corner. Oh god. Oh well, here we go. Oh! Alright! I thought this was going to be harder. Like, I think it depends on what kind of skills you have. Because some levels feel harder than others, but I think that's because, for example, I cannot do sharp turns. That's why I, I struggle too much on levels like with, uh, with halls, you know, walls around you. But when you can just swing around like an idiot, yeah, I, I can grab myself onto very distant things and stuff like that. And again, oh, well, if I, yeah, oh, okay, I see. But how do I avoid that? Ouch. Do I grab onto the floppy disk instead? Oh god, I grab onto the wrong thing. I grab onto the polybus arcade. Instead of... Okay. Okay, yeah, I think I have to grab onto one of the floppies in order to survive. Oh, oh god, I... <laughs> I didn't meant to do that. Oh! Yeah, they go really fast. I think this game is like... One of the most enjoyable games I've played in a while. It's the most fun you can have uh, with your pants on. Without my pants off, my ex-girlfriend was the most fun I could have with my pants off. But a temper a joke, although uh, they were fun times. But there's a reason she's my ex now. I had it, I just had to let go beforehand, but I, I just hang on to it for too long. Oh, and then and this time it was too little. But yeah, I, I think I get the general idea of what I have to do. I say as I crash into the thing. Okay, that kind of worked. Oh, yeah. I was too far away. Okay. There we go. Woof. Verticality. All right. Oh, I see what you want me to do. I don't know how I grab onto that. Or what the hell? Where the hell did I grab onto? Can I like... Okay, I have an idea. I don't have to do like what the game says. But uh, I need to... 
let go at the right time so I can go around this and grab on that. Although maybe the Polybus machine machines will hit me. Yeah, well oh, damn it. Well I could grab onto the machines. That that kinda works. I think I have an idea. Maybe if I get Maybe if I, you know, just pass by really slightly I, I can use the, the Polybus machines as... Huh, that almost... That was almost it But it's hard Oh, okay, I can go over the wall, interesting But I have to be careful with that Polybus machine, but I can do it, like it's doable. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like... Uh, <laughs> whoops. Yeah, okay, fine, I'll do it your way. I don't even know what, uh, what you want me to do. I guess you want me to grab onto the ledges. Like this. Ah, but while well, being careful. One. Two. Three. Oh, come on. One. Okay, uh. You just have to let go, like kind of early but not too much and also go in a straight line as straight as you can oh and then you have to okay uh <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. I, I know what I have to do now. It's gonna be hard, but it's doable. Yeah, as I said, it's going to be hard. Ah, sorry, also my hands hurt. Sorry, I'm just stretching a little. I'm gonna need something for Carpal Tunnel, like down the line, I, I'm aware. Oh god, no! The problem is that there is no, uh, there is not another point of where you can grab onto. After the one, uh, after the fourth one. That will be ideal, but there's nothing, like, you just have to go in one swing. Oh. No, too, too high. Maybe I kind of have an idea of how could I do it, but it will be... No, okay, I want to... Ouch. Okay, too low. There we go. I just need to go... Yeah, like fall, and once I'm about to touch the floor... Just grab onto that thing, and that way I will gain some leverage, so I could I can swing, I swing. But uh, uh, you know, okay, that didn't work. <laughs> I mean, maybe I I can grab onto the pyramids, 
Maybe that's what the lady wants me to do. After the fourth one, I mean, it's one. Oh. Uh, another problem is that my thumb is starting to get sweaty. And, that's, and that makes playability a little hard. Also, I wa before playing this one, I was playing another physics base game, so... Oh! Okay, good. I'm so glad I made it. Uh, and the, in the intended manner, too. Just resting my hand a little, very sorry. Uh, I thought this is a good time to remind you to please like my videos. <laughs> if you like what I do or if you want to recommend something, yeah, just leave a like and leave a comment too while you're at it. I take recommendations, I can play basically any game I want. Just tell me which one and I'll try to get it. I mean, this is my channel, so... Or maybe go to my Discord and tell me in there. Okay. Let me just uh, disconnect my controller because it was charging a little. Okay, oh, Spears too. Spears come back with a vengeance. Oh god. I'm not even sure how I'm going to do that. Like, I'm going to have to do a very good swing, like, at the end. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's how I do it. So I just ignore all the spears. There we go. <laughs> also, I almost got the record. Uh, did the music die? Oh no, it's still like playing, but still low. Okay, Singularity, let's go to Space City. Oh. I cannot grab from the Singularity, that's good to know. Also, I wasn't planning on doing that, that just, that's just how it worked. Okay, there we go, music is back on. Oh, oh well. You know, there's a channel I watch, it's called Thor High Heels. Uh, it's a pretty... I, I don't know how to explain it. Like, he talks about, you know, old games, new games, but with certain aesthetics, like... Sometimes he talks about like, oh yeah, this this game was like had vaporware art before vaporware was even a thing, or at least had that vibe. And he was talking about PS1 games and their covers. He usually talks about obscure stuff. That's why I watch him. I like obscure stuff myself. And yeah, like, he's right, PS1 games, like, especially the obscure ones, have such weird, like... Oh, 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 yes! Ah, <laughs> Had such weird, like, covers. Like, not all of them, but, you know, the really obscure ones did. And sometimes you didn't know what you were buying. Now, I'll be completely honest with you. During the PlayStation 1 era, I didn't have too much money. I mean, I was a child, so it kind of makes sense. Okay. Ooh. So I have to go into the right answer. Two plus two, that's four. But yeah, as I was saying, like, when I was a child, 
I had a a pirated PS1. Oh come on. So you know when I bought games, I bought you know pirate games. Where I live it was pretty whoops. It was pretty common to find them, like you will just go to a flea market and buy some. At the time, like buying one game, like one pirate game, costed one dollar. So you can imagine like one dollar against like what 40? Hell yeah, I'm buying like a bunch of video games. Ouch. Now, at first, like those pirate copies look like the real deal. Or at least they made the effort, like the disc had covers and the boxes look like just real PS boxes. Maybe sometimes they were badly printed, but the attempt was made. And yeah, if you wanted a game, you just had to... Whoops. You just had to buy, like, a copy, and if you just wanted to check it out beforehand, you just have to check the box, like, with an original game. So, easy, right? Let's say I wanted to buy, I don't know, Final Fantasy 7. All I needed to do was get the game, check the box. Of course, if you are playing something like Final Fantasy, you don't really know what you were buying at the time because of the of the covers, unless you know that uh, about Final Fantasy. I didn't know about Final Fantasy until the PS1 era, when uh, at the time friend, like he was a friend then, He showed me Final Fantasy 6 and I was very amazed at the game, like I was mesmerized by it. And so you know, it's time I... Uh, it's time I would see like... A game with Final Fantasy in the name, I would buy it. I already knew like what I was buying, an RPG, a Japanese RPG, a very good Japanese RPG. But, with some other games, like, you just had to base yourself on the box art and maybe the back of the box. Oh, come on, I almost had it. Yeah, uh, I guess I want to go like above this thing and grab onto that, maybe. Can I do that? Nope. Alright, fine, I'll do it your way, game. But then... You know, as the as the PlayStation One got older, a new era for piracy came in. <laughs> like they wouldn't even try to replicate the disc or anything. They just gave you like a, a disc with a blank cover, and you know, taken in the jewel case. But the jewel case just had like the cover of the original game but didn't have the back cover so oh come on you really didn't know what you were buying you were just buying based on the cover of course some of the covers were still like okay this is a sports game or 
this is a, an adventure game. I know Crash Bandicoot, I know Mega Man, I, I know when I see like the covers what to expect. I grab onto that. Ah, oh, so much for that. But then you have games like, let's say, Silhouette Mirage, which is one of my favorite all-time games, and I bought it on the cover alone. I didn't know what it was about or anything, because the game doesn't really tell you what it's about. You just bought it and hope for the best. But yeah, it, it's a really fun like run and shoot or shoot and run, whatever. But sometimes you will buy the game and it will be in Japanese. That was one of both an advantage and disadvantage of piracy. <laughs> no! Oh, I tried to grab onto the, you know, the CD. The, the advantage was that you could play any game. Like, really? Like, even the ones that were supposed to be region locked. Oh, come on! I tried to grab onto the green thing. The worst thing is that that's not even the ending. I, I don't know what I'm going to do when, when I get to the spear. But yeah, I digress, sorry. Getting back on track. Like, you could play any game on a... on a modified PS1. Which was good, but at the same time it sucked. Because sometimes you really didn't know what you were buying until you got home and... Oh, surprise, surprise! This game is in Japanese. That's why uh, I know how to play games in Japanese, not because I learned Japanese or anything, but because it, like playing Japanese games just taught me how to move around when I couldn't understand what was going on. You kind of just kept pressing until something happened. And in some cases, for example, on RPGs, you just have to memorize the item names. You couldn't read them if you don't know Japanese, of course. But as long as you memorize, like, okay, this symbol is for cure. Also, there was the little fact that... In RPGs, is oh, I don't know how that happened. In RPGs especially. Oh, come on. Like, items that recover HP will actually say HP in the description. Oh, so close. Like, oh yeah, this thing heals HP. Specifically HP. How much? Well, you didn't know. Now, some of them were really really merciful on you and had icons so you could be like oh, okay this is a high potion or this is like you know whatever potion 
uh, on some of them, like they even had it in English, like at least the high part. But other times, they were just text. So, good luck to you. May the odds be forever in your favor. Okay, here we are. No, oh, uh, maybe I should have... One of the things I, I almost never do is to swing back. Well, 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 at least try. But yeah, sometimes you will just buy a game and don't even you don't even know like on what language it was. Oh, excuse me? Okay, I guess if, if you like go into the right answer, you just get met with a wall. I guess that's the gimmick in this level. But wasn't the answer 5? Maybe I, I read the thing wrong or I forgot. Kind of sucks because I actually had it. Maybe just going into the answer is enough to solve the level. Or maybe, you know, the little sphere thing is inside there. One of those answers. But yeah, I play many a games in Japanese. But I, I, I'm starting to think that maybe that's why I take a, a great dislike to visual novels. I really hate visual novels. Like, if I wanted to, you know, read a novel, I would read an actual novel. Like, a, or a light novel, even. I like light novels. I don't have anything against light novels. Because I, I don't have to press anything. I, I'm just reading. Like, I just read through it. Okay. Okay, so three is the answer. Oh, come on. I don't even know how I did that. Oh, well, I don't see an exit, so I'm guessing three is the exit in this particular case. Oh, come on. But yeah, it's just a bunch of text and maybe some images. But it's so dumb. Now, not all visual novels suck. That much I can tell you. I love Phoenix Wright, like the whole Ace Attorney thing. But that's more interactive. Of course, there is only one, one right answer in each game, like... Oh wow, you cannot just like bullshit your way into the story. You can sometimes lose, like there are bad endings, but they are very scarce and far between. Oh, but yeah, I mean, it's the right one, yeah. I, I crashed, that's my problem. But I thought like just getting into it will finish the level. Maybe I did something wrong. Oh, come on. Well, at least now I know what to do, kind of, sort of, not really. But yeah, like not all visual novels are bad. But yeah, in most cases it's like, oh, this is so cringe. Especially like erotic visual novels. 
as you know, the ones that are just hentai with extra steps. If I wanted hentai, I would just watch hentai. Why would I sit around like talking to, trying to talk to a fake girl just for the off chance that the guy I'm playing as gets laid? Hey, all right. But can you reach this? Don't bite the skin. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what else. Uh, like it, it says something else. Nah, just that one. Okay, so. Oh, I see. It's like a big swing, and then how do how the hell do I reach that? Hello. Do I have to grab onto the team? Like again? To go back and forth? Maybe? Oh yeah, I have to go back and forth, but... Oh, uh, excuse me? Oh, uh, hello? I, I don't know what happened. Oh, too low. Oh, maybe I should have grabbed onto the other one. Oof, this level is going to be pain. And we just come from a pain level, so... You know, this is going to be fun. Oh, come on. I almost got it. Now I know what to do, kind of. I just have to swing back and forth. Oh, that's too low, yeah. Uh, too low, yeah. Yeah, I okay. <laughs> I sometimes just let, let go too early because I'm afraid I'm not gonna do it. Oh. Okay, that was too close for comfort. Oh. I let go too soon, I guess. That's my main problem with this game, I just let go too soon. Oh, come on! Like, maybe there is a way to... Cheese it because this game has a lot of cheese. Like, that's one part that I love about this game that you can cheese the ever living Jesus out of it. Yeah, see. Oh, I. Like, I was about to, like, only one more loop and I would have done it. I'm starting to get the hang of this, but it's gonna take time. Okay, here we go. Oh, too low. But yeah, getting back to visual novels. Yeah, I, I would just watch hentai if I wanted that, like... 
It's so dumb. Oh, yeah, too late. Or you know what, if I want the interaction with the woman, I would just, you know, ask someone out. It's not too hard, guys. And I don't even consider myself attractive, but you just have to have some confidence. And if they don't want what you're, uh, what you're selling, well, just ask someone else. It doesn't have to be like one girl only, you can ask multiple ones. Of course, if you are dating someone, you can only ask that one, so be careful with that. You can get confused, it happens. Not talking out of experience or anything. <laughs> Alright. Too low! Like, sometimes you can feel when it's too low, and sometimes you can't. Oh. Too tight. But yeah, it's not like I don't like the 2D waifu or whatever, but I prefer 3D girls. There is more fun to be had, even if it's just even if it's just really really hard to believe me. It's worth it. Oh. Yeah, I, I shouldn't try to go like over it the second time. I don't know how to explain it correctly, but yeah, instead of going over it, I should just grab onto it. Oh, I went too, too close. Almost there. Now that I'm thinking about it, maybe I can just grab onto this one. Oh, but I think I, I received the same, like, altitude maybe? Or maybe not, maybe I can just swing back and forth on this one. Until I get it. Maybe that's the ticket. Come on, no! I I'm gonna try that, I mean, it's a new strategy, might as well. Besides, this game is really fun. Also, I should start paying attention to my speed. To see what's the best way of getting a speed and altitude. Close. No! Oh! Oh! But like... Uh, maybe I can swing only on this one? Is there something behind me? No? Like, if I just win back and forth on this one and then, you know, go out, out of this way and then maybe I can reach that? No, I don't think so, right? 
Yeah, I know. This thing is on this side. Oops, no. Yeah, one of the problems, I think I mentioned this on a past episode, is that you cannot, like... Is uh, like go back once you just start going forward like this. I cannot go back too much. I can back up a little just to like to do some precision jumping. But aside from that, yeah, no. Okay, here we go. Come on. It's too far away. Oh, come on. Yeah, I wanted to check like how up I was I going, so maybe I need to use both then. To have the right amount of altitude. Up to low, yeah. See, that's what I I want to do. But ah, uh, I, I I really need to keep like real close to these things. This is such a weird level. It requires you know a certain a uh, certain skill, but I don't know if I have that kind of skill. As I already mentioned, like there are some things that I can do well in this game and some things that I can and I think this is one of the things that I cannot do well. Because you will think that, yeah, but can you reach this? Now I know what it's called that. You will think that with each swing back and forth, uh, I start going higher, but no, I, I'm not going higher. At least I don't feel like I'm going higher. And one of the main problems is that at some point when I'm doing this, I, I have to uh, like stop mid jump so I don't crash. And when I do that, I lose speed. And that's the thing we don't want to do in this particular level. Like that, see? I had to, you know, put a break. Just a little bit, so... Ooh, this looks promising. Oh, too, too far. Now, there is a high chance that I will probably have to delete some of this to make this video shorter. So, you won't be even watching this. Oh. See, I had to like take a break in there. Oh. I mean, take a break, like put the brakes on so I wouldn't crash. Or at least, you know, an approximation. I couldn't find the, the thing to grab onto.
I mean, that was pretty close. Mm, that was that wasn't even close enough. I'm not pressing anything, look, I'm just doing this and I wonder if it's my Joy-Con. I mean my Joy-Con my controller or what? Once I once I reach this I just work to God. But yeah, as I was telling you, like, yeah, visual novels, not even once. Sometimes I fall asleep while trying to play one, and even the ones I like, I, I, I fall asleep playing Finish Ride. I love Finish Ride, like, it's very funny, it has, like, a very colorful cast, which is something very important with a visual novel for me. Because if you're going to only make, you know, your generic characters like your short hair, black hair, Japanese boy, really skinny, doesn't have a personality. Besides, I like helping pretty girls and I'm horny. You know, something they can identify with or something, I don't know. And you know, Sunder Girl, childhood friend, which has a crush on the MC despite him being a like as bland as Wonder Bread. I mean, these levels are supposed to be, like, really fast to do. Like, it shouldn't take too much time doing them. And yet, here we are. I'm, I'm gonna try to commit to the full jump, like, yeah, just go like that. And then grab yourself. That's close, but not close enough. I, <laughs> yeah, sorry, I couldn't do it. But yeah, you know how the game goes, like maybe there is like the visual novels. Like yeah, you have your Saunders, you have your your quiet girl, the one that will get you to jail if you try anything. Nope. And so on and so forth. Come on, give me a second, I'm just gonna check my phone. And, uh, nothing interesting. But yeah, I, I think that's one of the things I hate the most about Japanese media, well, anime in general. Come on. I think I can do it, but I, I need to go back and forth on the same one. Yeah, but yeah, the main characters usually black hair. That's like a given. Usually very skinny. 
sometimes androgynous, you know how it works. Oh, I, I, I lost some altitude with that one. I, I could feel it. No, oh. I was onto something on there. But yeah, they are usually very bland, so... The viewers, in this case, you know, Japanese teenagers and men can get identified with them. But it's so stupid. Like, they all look the same. I know there are some differences, of course. But I, I can bet I can take, like, three main characters. From any given anime, I just move them around, like maybe take some screenshots and swap them. Like, okay, let's place this MC on this series and this one on this other screenshot and we're done. Let's call it a day. And nobody will notice it. That's how blank they are. That's why I prefer my my series with characters that, you know, have defining qualities, have defining traits, look different, act different. Konosuba, I love Konosuba. Because it's basically just a parody of the whole Isekai team. Despite the fact that it's one of the most popular Isekais, which kind of goes against the point, but whatever. I mean, it pokes fun at the at the whole team. I love Isekais, not don't get me wrong. But yeah, like every season, there's like two or three Isekais adaptations. I was trying to check if there was something I could grab onto. And you know, they are going to be pretty bland. But not all of them are, like I, I mentioned Konosuba, uh, the saga of Tanya the Evil, like Joho Senki, oh I love that one. Because the main characters are assholes. It's not that I identify with them, it's that it makes sense what they do. And that's very important to keep the immersion going. That you can say like, oh, okay, I understand why this character is doing things like that. Because when you're watching an anime and the main character is like, oh yeah, he's just so good. Like as a person or whatever. Like, oh yeah, he's helping others, and he helps the pretty girls, and whatever, he fights the bullies, or, you know, stuff like that. And it's like, who does that? I can't tell you who, a saint. But that's not something you can identify with, or like, you can you can even, like, root for that, like, of course, you cannot identify with jerks when they are too evil either. But at least you can say like, oh, okay, I kind of understand why they what he did that, like. He abandoned his party members because they were being stupid or I don't know. She committed war crimes because that's how evil she is. And at the time it looked like it looked like an easy thing to do. from her utilitarian point of view in the case of Tanya. But then you get to the main the main characters of other anime and stuff and we are well, but why are you helping this person like what's your reason besides just you know 
being good, I guess, or being the main character. And the worst part is when they get preachy about it. Because one of the things about main characters in anime, well, in media in general, is called like protagonist center morality. And it's exactly what it says on the on the name. It's like, okay, I as a person don't approve of this thing you're doing. Which means since I'm the main character that you are bad and I'm and I'm right. And it's always the same thing. And then I will admonish you for doing this, despite the fact that maybe the reasons given for you for you doing that thing are actually, you know, viable and and work, but not for me, because I'm the main character and I hate your god, so fuck you. Of course, other times it kind of makes sense, for example, uh, one common trope on isekais is like, okay, main character went to a fantasy world and found slaves. But people don't make a big fuss about slavery or anything, but he does, because he's the main character and those things don't fly on modern age. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it's very preachy, but yeah, of course, it's common sense. Slavery is bad. But then you have characters like... Stuffing their nose where they are not like... Sniffing around, getting in trouble when they are not like... It's not their place to be. But they do it because they are the main character, they must do. That's the reason the entry. I had to lose speed over there, see? But at least I'm not, not dead yet. Now I'm dead. Okay. Not too low. I'm trying to think of an example of a character messing with the natural order just because that's not how they roll. Nope. Oh. I mean, the only one that comes to mind is Subaru from RE0. Now, Subaru is interesting at least, despite being another black hair, a skinny MC. When I say skinny, I don't refer to the fact that they are just thin. Re I'm referring to the. Oh, oh wow. I think I almost got it with that one. I don't know how I did it. Oops, I let go too soon. Mm. But yeah, Subaru from Ari Zero, like... I, I say it's an interesting case because at first... I, I was very interested in the anime, I, I like the premise. Like, okay, this guy can, re can turn back time, but can only do so when he's dead. Like, oh! Okay, we did it! Yay! Uh, boxings? Uh, hello? Where do I, like, even grab myself onto... Oh! Oh, God! Okay, I see. Mm, I don't like this. It's too claustrophobic. Okay, I think I, I get it. Like this. Oof.
Oh, ok, ok, ok. Ok, getting a hold of the first one is the easy part. The second one, once you have it, it's like... It doesn't feel as bad. But yeah, Subaru from RE0. At first it's like, okay, I can understand it. Like, the guy goes through a lot of trauma. But then the cracks start to show. Oh, uh, come on, I don't even know how I'm going to do that one. Because he's such a, a, an otaku shouting that he expects everything to be handled to him, like on a silver platter. Okay, I'm in a new world, I'm gonna use a, a power. Like, I must have some. You don't. Okay, I discovered that I have a power, but it causes me a lot of grief and suffering. Alright. Now, I think that's one of the parts that is handled well, because the guy is really traumatized by, by using his power. Like, he remembers each time he dies, and that has left him, like, completely scarred. But then he meets Amelia. And he decides that she's going to be like... Emilia doesn't do it, by the way. Like, he decides that Emilia is going to be, you know... The co-protagonist in his story or whatever. And he basically forces himself into her life. At gunpoint, basically. Of course, he doesn't literally like, just say at gunpoint, but... You understand what I'm saying. He, he shoves himself into this narrative. Uh, and force, forces himself to be like the the romantic the romantic partner of this girl who has the mind of a like eight year old by the way. Yeah, she looks older, but she was frozen for like a hundred years or something like that, and now she looks a little older, but she still has the mind of a of an eight year old. She's very innocent. La now. Emilia, as a character, is like a whole kind of worms I'm not going to talk about. I, I really dislike her because she's really bland. But Su Subaru basically victimizes her by shoving himself into her narrative and being like, Oh yeah, you, 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 you are going to be my love interest now. I don't know how, I don't know why, but that's what I decided. I'm not going to explain myself. I don't have to. And I think that's the definition of a nice guy. Like, he sees a girl and decides that, oh yeah, that's... Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh! He sees a girl and decides that uh, she's uh, his, just because he decides so. And whoever is against it is just part of the problem, including the girl herself. Of course, Subaru is punished through the story for having this type of thinking, but at the same time, he's rewarded in the in the shape of Amelia for for all of his actions. He just has to apologize and then everything is hunky-dory, everything is, is good. Yeah, Emilia like gets mad at him from time to time, but Subaru always finds a way to get on, on her good graces again, because of course he can't turn back time. Well, go back in time, it's more like a checkpoint system. If you've seen the series, you know what I'm talking about. If not, just think it's like a video game. You die and you appear on a predetermined spot. Subaru doesn't determine on which spot he's going to appear. It just depends on, you know, the story. It's what the story calls for. But yeah, uh, the main problem is that... Subaru will just have... Uh, will keep trying to... Brute force his way into Amelia's heart. 
and there is nothing Emilia can do about it because if she gets mad at Subaru or something, Subaru just has to reset and, and just do things differently and that's it. Emilia will never remember what Subaru did wrong and Subaru will never uh, like learn to live with his mistakes because he can just turn back time now sometimes some of the mistakes are made like permanent another character suffer because of uh, Subaru's stupidity and his over usage of turning going back in time he, call, he calls it return by death which yeah it's pretty self-explanatory Oh, yeah, that's a, a really tight, like, swing. And yeah, as I said, Emilia is not going to remember anything, so who cares? She will just see Subaru as this perfect knight in shining armor that always has the best solution for all of her problems. Like no matter what, Subaru will always be able to to solve the issue at hand from Emilia's point of view, at least. It must be quite weird, like. This guy appears one uh, out of the blue appears one day in your life, and everything he does is perfect. Like you wanted to go somewhere, he already knew that, and not only that, he already made plans on how to get there. And along the way, he got like to meet new people and stuff like that. He has a lot of contacts, despite the fact that those contacts don't know about him. Yeah, in theory, he, he sounds like, you know, Prince Charming, quote-unquote, but in reality, no, it's kind of creepy if you think about it. There is a, a very good episode about it in The Twilight Zone. The Twilight Zone had a, a remake recently. Well, not recently, I think it was more like three or four years ago, something like that. I don't remember exactly. It's already cancelled, it only had two seasons. But one of the episodes, I was pretty amazed because, yeah, it's basically the plot of R in Zero. But in this case, Emilia, the Emilia character is actually pretty smart and doesn't play by Subaru's bullshit. Yes! Alright. Pillar Tower, oh god. Can you please stop with the towers or the well the closest spaces? I was enjoying this game until you know stages like this. No? Oh yeah? Oops, okay, yeah, I, well, I was doing right, but Okay, 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 yeah. Okay, so in this episode of the Twilight Zone, it's about this girl who meets uh, this guy, uh, this guy saves her from being run over because she was very distracted listening to a podcast or something, I don't remember exactly what she was doing, she was very distracted, so, uh, okay, I was like, now what, oh, come on, so, it's so weird. Oh, oh, come on. And then, well, this guy invites her to, okay, let's, I think they went to a museum or something. And at first, this guy was very charming. 
like he made the right jokes, talk about the right things. But then he started to get a little creepy. For example, he had like perfect reflexes. Like, let's say someone was passing by and was about to drop something, he already knew it and was prepared to act accordingly. Oh, ouch. And stuff like that, you know, something falls, he moves out of the way beforehand. It's so weird, like sometimes it doesn't look like you're swinging, you feel like you're being dragged over there. Oh, the enemy is rough. Oh god, how many floors are there? But yeah, uh, and then this guy was able to predict what's go what was going to happen next, and he was telling, like, you know, he was bragging about it to the girl. So he went from being, like, really nice and having a nice conversation with her to being kind of creepy on the way he talked about you know how events were unfolding like oh yeah look at that person she's going to sneeze and then the other person is going to drop that and yeah stuff like that until the guy tells her the truth like he, he becomes completely honest like, I don't know why, but I'm trapped in this time loop. At first she didn't believe, uh, believe him, but yeah, it, it became quite clear that he was telling the truth. Uh, maybe if I let myself fall. I, I, I was trying to go to the side, but I guess I couldn't. Oh, come on. Maybe I can grab myself from the police machines, although they are very far away, yeah. Ah, oh, come on, yeah, I always go too, too up, too far up. But yeah, he, he tried to explain his situation, like that he was trapped in a, in a time loop. See, I just like go up instead of swinging. Ouch. And then it became like... Because the guy was really freaked out. Because the guy knew stuff about her that she didn't tell him about. And he was like, yeah, I, I talked to you before, and I really like you. Like, I, I, I'm trying my best to to make you like me, but why can't I do it? Why won't you like me? And then he goes like, you know, he went full psycho. Oh, ah, I was so close. Because, you know, he was actually a uh, quote-unquote nice guy. He thought that by going, you know, back in time, back and forth, back and forth, he would eventually want her over. Oh. And that he deserved that. Because of all the, you know, the research and time he invested. Like that he deserved her as a prize. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Uh, and he even tried to, you know, assault her. And that's when, you know, the, the episode started getting dark. Because he was, she was very confident, like, what are you going to do, a scream? I, I know this area of the museum has no, like, guards. You can scream all you want, no one is coming to help you. Oh, 
Oh, oh, okay. I, I don't know how that how I did it, but I did it. Okay, if you're watching this, like, if you're watching this stage, it means I, I skipped, you know, a lot of tries I was doing, and I'm leaving this part in the video so you know that I cut some some of the failings because it was taking a lot of time. And don't worry, I, I wasn't talking about really much, I was just talking about how I hate like visual novels and stuff like that. And doing a comparison between RE0, main character Subaru, and an episode of the Twilight Zone. So continuing on that... Uh, the Twilight Zone thing, so this is called, uh, this is called Enter Dimension. Okay, uh, hello? Okay, I have to let go, but... Oh, this is indeed damnation! Woo! Sigi and Sa Oh no, not one of these again! I hate those levels! Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh. So yeah, the toilet's own thing. He, he, like, the guy started, you know. He got really physical. And then what? Like, I don't get it. Like, okay, I grabbed from this thing, but is there another rocket waiting for me or something? I don't see it. I, I just see a bunch of shapes. And I cannot stop myself from going. Maybe if I don't grab onto that thing and just like try to swing normally. Yeah, just just swing normally like a normal person would. Yeah, yeah, that's easier. Okay, don't grab onto the thing. That's just a distraction. Oh, I grab onto the wrong one, but it kind of works. Now I'm out of the level. Yeah! No! Oof. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, I, I think I can do it. I can get there without using the rocket. But yeah, the guy actually thought like, the girl own him something and even the girl calls him out on it like I don't know you anything you are a terrible person but at that point he was like really sweeping his shit yeah <laughs> singing and singing indeed oh no okay okay I, I see it's not like all the way up there I just have to Swing around a little. Okay, okay, don't panic. I have an idea. Maybe I can do it, but I will need to ask a little more airtime. Oh, yeah, instead of doing all of this fancy schmancy swinging, ouch, I, I, I took the wrong one. I wasn't even planning on catching on to that one. Oh, come on, I almost had it. Oh wow.
and then you know eventually the girl managed to overpower him because he wasn't as strong as he thought he was at least not against her like she completely owned him and and he taunted her like he taunted her saying that it didn't really matter because he all he had to do was go back in time and try again but then the girl just broke his nose i think he he i mean she like just punch him in the face and um, by the end of the episode like uh you know because he got arrested the the guards eventually did find her out fine i'll try it the way the game wants me to also i don't know how it's that's going to work Yeah, I, I, I don't see it. Oops. No, I, I'm gonna try my way instead. I, I know I can cheese it. I, I just have to be, like, smart about it. Okay, too low. I think the trick is catching up. I could go back there, but as you can see, I'll just crash. Maybe there is a way, but I'm not getting it. But yeah, the, the guy was arrested for being a total creep and everything. But of course, he taunted her about coming back, just trying again. Huh, maybe I can do it in, in you know, once again. Let's try it. Hmm, yeah, maybe. Oh, that was so close. No, too low, too low, too low. Let's try to save it. Oh, come on, I was almost there. Nice! Okay, last level. Usually these are the uh, oh, why, why, What's with the tunnels? Oh no. Hey, do you like tunnel 1 and tunnel 2? Well, prepare for fuck you. Here's tunnel 3. It's so a little hard, a little hard to navigate. But it doesn't feel as claustrophobic as the other tunnels. I'll, I'll give it that. But yeah, eventually the, the episode ended with the guy, of course, going back in time. But this time he sees the girl. Uh, and yeah, he doesn't go for it this time. Because uh, she really kicked his ass. And that's very interesting, you know, because... The guy was clearly obviously trapped in a, in a time loop and when you're trapped in a time loop you just usually have to learn a lesson about yourself in order to, you know, undo the loop but this guy was so terrible that he didn't le learn his lessons uh, and hence he was trapped like there forever I guess the lesson had to do with don't be an ass towards women or don't treat them as objects or something like that. Maybe? Ouch. But no, he just. She was just trapped in there forever, I guess. And look, I can I can understand completely the appeal of being uh, trapped in a in a Groundhog Day type type of situation. You can do anything. There are no consequences. Oh, so close to your actions. But the thing is, for how long will you be able to do that? You don't know. 
and that's really scary. Okay, imagine oh, you, you just had it in one loop and just flip your shit and start destroying everything, causing massive chaos, doing a lot of illegal things. I'm not going into specifics, I'm just going to leave that to your imagination. And then you just say, well, the day is going to reset anyway, so once I go back to bed and wake up, it's going to be same old, same old, but then you wake up, as it turns out, the loop was broken somehow, and now you have to deal with all the things you did. Maybe the police is already at your door, or you're waking up, you're woke up by them, or you woke up in jail, or worse. So yeah, I think that's one of the disadvantages of the of the loops. You will have to know like what exactly is going on. Of course, if you know some some type of mystical companion or whatever appears before you and tells you exactly the conditions or how to escape, yeah, you can have your fun. Uh, I won't blame you. I mean. Everything you do will be forgotten, I won't even remember, so how can I, you know, blame you or judge you? Go nuts! But if not, I would recommend you be really careful. Hey, maybe you are trapped right now in a time loop, and that's why you're watching this video. Wouldn't that be something? But hey man, if you're trapped in the time loop, I don't know how many times you have to listen to this, but uh, please take care of yourself. Don't don't give in to the madness. I, I know you will be able to leave one day. Just have some hope. N never let the hope die. I mean, I'm not giving up, <laughs> and this level is ass. And I know you already heard this, uh, you know, <laughs> maybe a million times at this point. But never give up hope. I may I may be a very grumpy motherfucker by my own admission, like yeah. I, I had it rough sometimes with life. Oh come on! But I, I always try to keep moving forward. Because not doing so, and just giving up, will be pretty stupid, like, why give up? Like, if there is still a chance, there is always a chance, believe me. The only thing we cannot fight against is death. And that's just because we, we don't understand it. I mean, we understand how humans die, of course. What we don't understand is what's beyond that. Or if there is even something beyond something that like that. Come on! Oh, so close. But yeah, I always keep keep my hopes up. Ah. Even if I, I talk about lowering expectations and stuff like that. There is always a little bit of hope in me. Ah, oh. so close. Oh. There is no... the only situation you cannot escape from is death. But that's when you are already, you know, dead. Not when you are about to. If you are about to die, you can escape it if possible. Like, for example, let's say you are in an accident and you are trapped in your car. Do you give in? Or do you try to make your way out? Let's say the car is on fire. And maybe you will have to lose a leg. 
Are you really gonna give in just because you don't want to lose your leg? Are you willing to just give up your life? Because you won't be able to walk correctly for the rest of it? Is it really worth it? You have to ask yourself those questions. And really fast because time is going. And it's not going to stop. The, the simple answer is no, don't give up. You deserve better. And yeah, uh, life sometimes throws some curveballs to us. But you just have to roll with the punches, I guess. Ouch. 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 Ah. Worst part is, is that I'm getting hungry. And when I get hungry, you know, I, I just want to finish the thing so I can go eat. And I want to stop until I finish. So I cannot eat until I do this. Oh, so close. What? I don't even know what did I grab onto. Ouch. But yeah, uh, my potentially trapped friend in a loop, don't give up, there is hope. And uh, even if you lose hope, at least try to have as much fun as possible. There is no reason for why you should deprive yourself of fun. And hey, maybe if you've been trapped for so long that escape seems impossible, then try to have as much fun as you have, as you can. And maybe if you do, the loop will end. And yeah, you will get in trouble. But at least you will be out of the loop. And isn't that something? You have to, you know, see the silver lining. If I was trapped in a in a time loop, depending on, on the type of time loop or the place I was, things like that, I will do all sorts of crazy things just to see what happens. And once I, I am really and once I'm really tired of everything, I, I'll just uh, get myself into a fight. And just keep fighting until my body gives, gives off and see if I can wake up next. After all, if, if the loop seems to be never ending, maybe breaking all the bones in my body will help. Maybe not, who knows. Maybe I will still wake up in the loop but with all my bones broken, uh, bones broken, or maybe I will just wake up in a hospital the next day. Or if I'm really unlucky and die, and wake up again, at least I will demonstrate that dying doesn't stop the time loop. I don't believe in suicide. That's why I will go like to go down swinging. Maybe saving someone. That could work. Maybe save someone from a fire that I myself started. <laughs> okay, that was a little dark, but not enough. Just joking. Hmm. 
But yeah, you, you'll see where the loop takes you. And maybe you will eventually like find what whatever your mission is. Um, but at that point, let's say because I, I, I got reminded of a movie. It's called Boss Level. It, it came out like last year, I think. Give me just a second, I'm gonna lower the volume because it's a little lo uh, loud for me. Actually, the, the audio of the game is too loud, let me fix that. Okay, uh, I think that's better. I didn't even realize it. Oh yeah, that sounds a little better. Okay, I'm gonna like do this and then grab onto the... Yeah. Okay, that's the ticket. That's what I needed to do. Grab onto the Polyviews Arcade. Just be careful in here and then grab the circle. Maybe. Or maybe the square. Well, cube. It's more like a cube. Ouch. But yeah, what was oh yeah, yeah the, the movie I was talking about is called Boss Level. I haven't seen it. I I just watched a, a YouTube video when it was mentioned and then I, I looked the description. It's about this guy trapping a time loop. And a bunch of people want to kill him, like they are out for blood. I don't know how I did it the like the first two times with the Polybus machine. Okay, I need to concentrate. So I won't grab from the machine, okay. Let's grab from this pink thing. Hmm, maybe if I grab from the pink thing, there is nothing back here. I mean, I can grab onto those. What? Huh, interesting. Let's try it again. Well, that didn't work. Oh well. Again. No, again. So yeah, it's about this guy who wakes up and there is like a thousand assassins trying to kill him. And he has to fight his way through them. Uh, something like that. And I think that's a pretty neat idea. Uh, I really want to watch it. Maybe I'll watch it after this while I eat. The problem is, I don't know where to grab, and that green thing, like, this green thing, is just in the way. If it wasn't there, like, yeah, I could do it. Oh, come on. I, I just hope that level 100 is not 204 or something like that. Because this game is really fun, but these fucking tunnels... And you cannot go slow because of the Polybus machine. You just have to gotta go fast! Yeah. Okay, I'll try to grab onto the Polybus machine. Oops. But on the side of the screen instead of the... <gasps> yeah, like that. Okay, almost got it. Yeah, I think I think I can do it. No. Alright, I'll try, I'll try. 
Fucking oh, let's drop him to the The worst thing is that I don't have like cookies or anything that almost that I can eat to satiate my hunger just while I play this level. I'm very tempted to just take a lunch break, but no, 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 this is the last level. I just want to finish it so I could eat. I mean, I have to grab onto this and then onto that, but everything comes too fast at you. See? Too fast. Too slow. Maybe if I grab onto the, the sphere, the pink sphere. Okay, there. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it. I, I just need to do like. I have to be fast. But it's a, it's, it's a very tight jump. Damn it. Almost got it. Nope. The main thing is that you really have to concentrate on the next thing you're going to swing into. Because if you don't, you're going to, you know, get disoriented by the whole thing moving around. No. Oops. Maybe I can do it in one swing. Let's try it. Almost, but no. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I can do it in one swing. The trick is to to grab onto the polyboost machine to get a little extra boost when you're passing by it not before when you're passing by it you just have to be careful and not crash into anything see the main problem is well Everything is the main problem in here. You have to have good reflexes, so get good. And I was talking about this on some other video I was recording before this. Like, yeah, you have to know your limits. And if the game is too hard for you, well, play another game. You don't have to play that game necessarily. The game defeated you. What are you going to do? Complain? Be like those gaming journalists like, oh yeah, this game is really hard. Why doesn't Elden Ring or Dark Souls have an easy mode? Because I'm a big crybaby. Okay, uh, th now the problem I have is after that square, I, I kind of lose like sight of where I'm going. See? Okay, I'm gonna make a brief pause. Okay, I had to make a small pause because I couldn't like resist the hunger anymore. Also, I wash all of my dishes, like all of them.
Uh, I was having a small problem with my... With my water pipe, like, at first I thought it broke, but as it turns out, nah, it was... But what happened was that the dogs just opened one of the faucets and that's it. That's why the water appears to be leaking. Oh, I, I think I can, like, hold onto the triangle, I think. No, not that one, the other one, but... <laughs> Ouch. Ah. Uh. Like, this will be much easier if that, like, cylinder, like the green cylinder wasn't in there. But as I explained in other videos, I just need to keep practicing and be aware of my own skill level. The game is not gonna get easier by just complaining about it. It gets easier with practice. Uh, excuse me, like sometimes it happens, uh, I think this is like the second or third time I noticed that that you crash onto something but you don't die, like you just lose all of your momentum but you remain alive for a brief moment and then the game just remember like oh yeah collision exists I pressed the button but nothing happened Sometimes I go too much to the right, or to the left, or somewhere, and I crash. It's hard to tell. <laughs> I didn't even try on that one. Another problem is that since the tunnel is moving, I feel like I'm falling instead of 
you know, swinging. So I feel I'm just falling, like like the tunnel gives you that that sensation. But no, I'm not falling. I, I'm going, you know, I'm swinging from one side to the other. And it's so disorientating. I think that's another problem, like, maybe, maybe the game confuses your brain and you think you are falling, like, not physically, but, you know, while playing. Whoops. And as you can see, I keep making the same mistakes, but... Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. It depends on the timing. And right now, I'm having pretty bad timing. Pretty, pretty bad timing. Bad, bad, bad. See, like, like that, that, that one is a perfect sample. I don't know if I was going up or down. I just crashed. And one of the other problems is that you can crash like anywhere in the tunnel. Like even the ceiling. Oh, I almost had it. And since uh, I did the dishes, which was a bad idea, now that I think about it, my hand hurts. So instead of doing my regular button pressings, I'm being a little soft on the controller. Which doesn't sound so bad until you realize that when I do that, I sometimes let go of the trigger too soon. Or sometimes I do the opposite and try to overcompensate. Huh, that was interesting, like, letting go of the thing and then doing it again. Huh. Okay, uh, I'm gonna try to ignore the polybus machine. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's better. Going back to the pink cylinder strategy. Oh, I almost had it. I just need, I just needed to uh, catch myself onto the computer screen. Yeah, also I need to grab the cylinder, like, not too, not too late. Oh, close, but I waited for too long, ouch. Oh! Too close to the ceiling. Yeah, 
you know after I'm done with this one I'm gonna record it and upload it to my discord and it will seem like I did it in one try of course but of course I didn't it took hours well not hours but it took a long time an hour at best I was doing the pink cylinder so well and then suddenly I couldn't do it. Nope. Like, yeah, one of the problems is that I have to stop doubting myself and just compromise to every every swing I make. But not too much, as you as I just saw. Just imagine this like, uh, I don't know, like you're 13 years old and don't know which, uh, which girl you want to date. But at the same time, you know both girls are trying to lead you on, while at the same time not compromising with not, you know, making a compromise to you themselves. So, in return, you make, like, a half ass time at a compromise. So, you keep dating them, but... But while dating the other or something, I don't know, I'm... Like, the analogy didn't work. Because I'm trying to concentrate a lot. Yeah, that, like, it's, again, it's that stupid, like, green cylinder that ruins all my plays. I have no issue, not even with the polyviews thing. Or the rest of the stage, it's just that stupid cylinder right there. Ah! Oh my finger, like my my right thumb is hurting a lot right now. And I know for you since I, I edited down the video, it's not gonna seem like much, but I've been playing on this episode. Oh for over two hours, two hours and ten minutes at this point. For you it should be like an hour, an hour and twenty at most. Another problem is that, you know, I'm playing and I'm talking. That's kind of hard. I know it doesn't look like it. And sometimes it may depend on from person to person. Oh, I, I almost had it. But yeah, sometimes talking and doing something else is hard oh I grabbed to the on the wrong one but I'm doing better I'm starting to avoid the green cylinder a little more consistently whoops uh, I waited too long like you have to 
go fast when doing this. And you have to like latch yourself onto the, the green cube as soon as possible. Because if you take too much time, you're not gonna have enough like altitude to make the swing and you're gonna crash onto the floor. Hey, that kind of of work. Oh, okay. Well, I, I I saved the the thing, but I ended up dying in the end. Either way, would have been amazing if I didn't. But oh, too close to the wall. But I'm getting better. And that's the secret. Practice makes perfection or at least stops you from looking like an idiot and complaining about video games being too hard. <laughs> and the only reason I left that fail attempt while recording this is so you could hear that. But yeah, in short, get good. Like, if you want to finish the game, and cheating aside, this is the only way to actually do it. Uh, like like the cube was to like too far into the floor to work. Oh, I almost got it. Ouch. Yeah, another problem is that when I try to, you know, look on this side to grab onto the cube, the camera just goes like right into the floor. Because this thing is so, you know, so tight. Reminds me of my ex-girlfriend. Hey yo! Ouch! Oh god, I, I didn't know how that was working, but it was and then it wasn't. Like I'm trying to go as fast as I can because that's the point of the game but I guess another option will be oh oh taking your time but no I, I won't take my time I could and I guess I could eventually do it but the point the whole point of the game is to go fast I grab onto the wrong team. It happens, that's why we are practicing. Ouch. Yeah, sorry, yes, it's because I'm starting to get a little more disoriented than I was before. Oh, wow, I didn't know that was even possible. 
なんでだー<笑>ああ、I was almost there. Like going over the, the green cylinder and bypassing the, the green cube. But I have to be like really fast about it. And not crash, so. Once you get past the green cube, like, the next part is a mess because I don't have, like, any practice at all with it. Okay, I wasn't planning on that, but I, I guess I saw how to bypass the the cylinder like this. See? Well, of course I keep crashing, but you have to grab this while while you are low, but not too low. Almost. Once you find a feel to it, ah. Oh. I didn't mean to do that. Once you find a feel to it, it's like a little easier to perform, but you have to be quick. And you know, I consider a good thing like being to at least uh, being able to play these games, because I know that once I get older, like, uh, I don't know, maybe 20 years in 20 years I won't be able to do the same thing I'm doing right now because my reflexes will be like all cranky and old and yeah I won't be able to even attempt on, on doing this So this is my chance, so I better take it. But who knows, maybe like video games in 20 years will be way different. And the people who says like Dark Souls need AC modes would have won by then. Oops. So you know. Video games will be made for little babies, literal babies, sorry. No, 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 I should have grabbed them. Uh. But who knows, in 20 years, a lot of things can happen.
Maybe there won't be even be video games in 20 years. Oh, I should have grabbed the floppy disk. Maybe like a catastrophe or war, which is a catastrophe in itself, or whatever destroys us. Or maybe we don't have enough resources to keep making entertainment. Video games included. I mean, you have to be open to the possibilities. Or maybe video games become like this very sought after thing because nobody has them. Or maybe like only really rich people have access to them because of laws or whatever. I can sort of imagine a future like that. But it would be like a very dystopian future. Oh, come on. I tried to grab it. I pressed the button. But sometimes the, the, like, the crosser doesn't like react to my button presses. Oh. Yeah, I keep crashing into that thing. But this is the last level for the episode, so you can bet your ass I'm gonna be staying here until I do it. Can you imagine if I was streaming this? I mean, although this will be make uh, this will make a very entertaining stream with people all over the world, like ah, oh! yelling at me to get good. Like my reflexes are kind of dull right now. Because I've been playing this level so much time, even after taking the break. Ah, you don't know if you're going up or down. I, I, I try to grab the pink thing. Close. Not too close. Uh. Oops. Yeah, too close to the floor or the ceiling or whatever. The speedruns for this game must be like amazing. They must be able They must be able to do stuff that I cannot. Like even a, a regular speedrun because you know this game was made for a speedrun and that's why it has the timer, that's why the levels are so short uh, but super hard. But yeah, take, take into consideration, like, imagine a game like The Legend of Zelda, like, 64 is one of them. It's one of the most speedrun games. 
And one of the most optimized too. Oh, I, I, I didn't know where to grab. That's one of the problems on going slow. I should have grabbed the blue thing instead of the computer. That's on me. But yeah, like even on a game like that, which is, you know, a story driven and not made for speedruns, is like super optimized. They have glitches for everything. And it's amazing the time and dedication that people take into speedrunning. Can you imagine if like suddenly there was this group of people saying like, oh, speedrunning is so hard, like the skill level is so high. Why don't they make like a speedrunning easier? Like why don't they make an easy mode for speedrunning? Do can you like can you imagine someone saying stuff like that? Yeah, that's how people like complain about Elden Ring sound. Or any Souls game for that matter. So close. Ouch. It will be something like, oh, they should let us use more cheats during speedrunning. Or why do speedruns, why are speedruns so long? They should let us do segmented speedrunnings and then put it all together and pretend it's just a single run. I, I know segmented speedrunning exists, but you should, you know, put a disclaimer saying like, oh yeah, this was a segmented speedrun. That's one of the rules. There have been cases of, of people being caught cheating during things like those. Oh, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know where I was going with that. And again, I, I should really need to pay attention to that like a sky blue cylinder. It's like I grab this one and then pass the green cylinder and then grab onto the the keyboard and then the blue cylinder. But yeah, I myself I cannot speed run like I don't have that kind of skill. But I'm really amazed by the people who can. And I watch a lot of videos where they talk about them, like what kind of dedication they put into the craft. Like months, even years, just trying to speedrun either a game or a specific area of that game, things like that. And like speedrunning is very competitive. Not all games, of course, because not everyone is speedruns all games. Ouch! I was close. I wa I, I was already setting my eyes on the blue cylinder. Okay, I. I didn't let go soon -ish enough and this was too soon too late no like one of my favorite speedrunners 
Uh, you should know him. He's, he's West Wester Wester. Uh, I'm sorry uh, because I forgot how to uh, uh, how to say his name. I forgot it. Sorry, man. No. He does Pokemon speed running, and he you know uploads clips of that to his YouTube channel, and it's very fun to find like. All the glitches or all the bad RNG that he finds which reminds me I once found um, uh, I once found an, an undocumented like glitch in Pokemon Stadium 2. Too bad I didn't have, you know, a camera or something to record at the time. And I don't even know if I should call it a glitch or what. A soft lock? I guess you could call it a soft lock. That's the closest one! I managed to grab onto the blue cylinder. But yeah, the soft lock on Pokemon Stadium 2. Okay, so... This happened while I was playing with... Uh, not a rental Pokemon, it was a Pokemon from my blue version. It was Mew. The Mew you get from glitching. Now, there is nothing wrong with the Mew, as far as I know. It's a regular Mew. It's the way you get it that's, you know, a little messed up. Ah, uh, now, this time I was doing, I was going too fast. So, okay, this Mew, if I remember correctly, he had Psychic, Metronome, Transform. And what else? And soft boil. So yeah, psychic metronome transform and soft boil. You know that day I, I, it was night. I think I was pretty bored, so I decided to make a free for all and put that Mew against the same Mew. You know, the computer using it. But then something happened, which I couldn't replicate again. So we kept using sidekicks and recovers. One of the main issues about a Mew versus Mew fight was that the transform didn't work, and well, we eventually ran out of soft boils. But instead of struggling, the, the AI didn't do anything. Like, he couldn't win against me, so in the end, he just, like, didn't, he just didn't do anything. Okay, grab the, okay, if I go too fast, I should grab the, the yellow pyramid, I mean the pink pyramid shape. instead of the of the blue cylinder but yeah i was just like there watching how the opponent didn't do anything so yeah the, my only escape was to surrender like he basically made me surrender he couldn't win against me so he just didn't do anything it was so weird Can you imagine that, like an AI, instead of surrendering, just doing nothing, waiting for you to surrender? That way it won, it won, it wins, sorry.
Oof. Ouch. Barrelet Swing is a game about just keep moving. Keep moving and nobody dies. Maybe I'll try to replicate it sometime in the... Uh, I had it, but I doubted myself. Sometime in the future to see if it's possible. Uh, I mean, if it is like reproducible, I may be onto something like something that nobody has ever found out about. Now, my Pokemon Blue has since... Oh, see! Yes! Ah! <coughs> ah. It took me like... I would say between 40 minutes and an hour to finish this level. Jesus Christ. Okay, let's see what the next level is. Bare bones. Uh, well, can I? Yeah, I mean, I can grab to the bones. I cannot grab to the rock, but the bones are fair game. Yeah. Uh, I'll get to that on the next episode. But yeah, that's Berlet's Wing for now. Next time we're going to the last episode, you know, level 81 to level 100. So, anyways, enjoy the video. Leave a like, have something to say, comment down below. One more, please subscribe if this video ended. You can bet it is. So, I think so much for watching. Goodbye.